And this week, we're going to be debating and talking about, is Intel threatening not to do 14A Foundry without an upfront CapEx commitment from a customer? Is this a brilliant move or a boneheaded view? Let's roll the dice. Flip the coin, Moorhead, not roll the dice. It's a freaking coin. I got it's you. Coin, coin. By the way, the only competition I have, this guy. Snake Eyes. That's what I was thinking about, Dan. You and Snake Eyes and then the dice. All right. I'm going to be arguing that Intel threatening to not do 14A Foundry without enough for a commitment it is a brilliant move. Dan, Liputan, the ultimate negotiator, pulls a move very similar to what Qualcomm and TSM, sorry, Qualcomm and Broadcom did with Hawk Tan. So, what did Hawk do with Apple? Apple was waffling on buying Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and then it came out that he said, well, if we can't do this, it's not a good business, we're just going to shut it down. Um, which, I don't know, a couple weeks later, a couple months later, we see an agreement that Broadcom and Apple have come to a long-term agreement on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Success. And then... Qualcomm, right, with Apple selectively leaking out, right? It's doing its own modem chips, which it is. Uh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there in a year. Oh, wait, I mean two years. I mean three. I mean four. I mean seven, right? And uh, Cristiano called them on that and basically floated that said, uh, we may not be even doing a thin modem uh, for Apple in the time frame we all know that Apple needed the modem. And then shockingly, right, we had a licensing agreement and a modem agreement that was uh, long-term. So it totally worked. So this is essentially that. And what I wanna peel apart is, is in reality, this should scare the heck out of NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, and Qualcomm, and Broadcom, and Marvell, because if Intel doesn't do this, uh, we will see TSMC prices and profits, profit on a percentage and profit on a dollar, absolutely skyrocket. Um, and they're just not thinking about that being a reality. And I think they're looking for somebody else uh, to do it. So they want somebody else to go first because right now what they're looking at is what's right in front of their face, which is opportunity. The other thing is gonna be innovation, where if Intel doesn't do 14A Foundry, um, you have less competitors, less people doing it, it's pretty safe to say you're gonna have less innovation. I mean, look at, you know, look at, um, look at markets where there might be just one player, maybe one and a half players uh, out there. Uh, the geopolitics, the geopolitics uh, are immense, and the, I, the U.S. government doesn't have a clue about this. Trust me, I'm, I've talked to them. And that is, foundries do two things. They create IP, and they make chips based on that IP. All of the IP for TSMC foundries is done in uh, Taiwan, all 10,000 of those engineers. CC uh, did that, elucidated that on a conference call. And that was also rung through the uh, Taiwan version of our House and Senate. And therefore, if Taiwan gets invaded and the U.S. gets cut off, we're going to be stuck on whatever the next manufacturing node is, probably without the capabilities to improve on the current nodes. And then TSMC is basically going to be like SMIC is right now, the inability to move stuff forward because of the lack of IP. So I think we will start getting, I'll bet you, uh, Kevin, Kevin O. Buckley, his phone was ringing off the hook, like, well, wait a second, well, wait a second, right? And then, you know, if I'm Kevin, I'll be like, hey, you've just been negotiating and using me as a lever to get a lower price with, with TSMC. So it's time to, you know, buck up or shut up and I think it's going to be a brilliant move. Oh, well, I just did a check on my, uh, you know, history. And I don't think that 
the Chinese or the, the People's Republic of China or Communist China, whatever we want to call it, has any real claim to Korea. And I did just check, and Elon Musk just committed some of his most important foundry and fabrication to Samsung at 2 nanometer. And so while we're so busy claiming that Taiwan and an invasion would be the end of innovation, we forget that there's another country that is Korea that has a leading edge fab and foundry and that, yes, has had a little bit of a struggle, but is clearly breaking through by gaining the trust of someone like Elon Musk to build scale on their leading edge. No. So, yes, there is an argument that the U.S. needs to have its own chip champion. And heck, I may even know someone that's made that argument. But we have diversification. We have work being done with IBM and Rapidus in Japan that can also handle two nanometer fabrication. And as far as I know, China doesn't have any claims on the Netherlands. So high NA and, and EUV will still be available in other markets. And so, sure, yes, Taiwan is the best right now. And yes, there is some risk there. But there are other players. And Intel making such a stake is basically just them putting a uh, throwing a, a white flag out there saying, hey, U.S. government, you better back us because we're threatening to leave the market if you don't give us some give us some money, give us a, some support. And, Maybe just force our force the customers that don't actually want to work with us to work with us so that we can actually continue on this path. But it's very simple. The options do expand beyond Taiwan. I'm sorry, uh, Samsung's a more than capable company. And yes, Intel in its heyday certainly had the potential to be a foundry. But after this 18A debacle, I doubt customers are confident. I doubt they're going to be investing heavily. And I'm pretty sure that the U.S. isn't going to let China invade Taiwan anyway. So I don't know. Wrong move for me. I think they needed to go do it the right way, build the best node, make it high performance, give the customer no reason to select anyone else, put some pressure back on Taiwan to not be so greedy with their high prices. But if anyone else gets it right, and I think Samsung will, that will be enough to put Taiwan back in check. We will be fine with or without Intel. Oh, that was good, Dan. And I actually did. Um, I actually did cite Samsung in my original uh, tweet that got, I think, 17,000 uh, views on it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a, this is a very nuanced, nuanced issue here, folks. And the other thing I want to point out is that Intel is going to do 14A for its own silicon. Uh, there's a lot of extra expense that you need to lay out capacity right, to even get the uh, third, all, all the third party IP from let's say Synopsys and Cadence uh, out there uh, rolling, so. Hey, can I say something just for the record? Cause I'm gonna get probably a lot of Intel bulls that won't realize and remember this was a simulation and I'm just doing my awesome debate stuff. But like, I want Intel to be successful. Like it is very well documented that I would like to see Intel execute. I wanted to see them execute on 18A, and I was very disappointed in how that's all gone down. But 14 was always, you said, you know, it had the mobile, it was more like, this is something you've been on the record many times, talking about higher likelihood of being able to support mobile um, SOCs. Um, certainly gave some more time for very sensitive, high volume custom type chips that, that are being done by TSMC. And, and again, none of these companies, they're all willing to pay the 25% premium to not mess up yield and not mess up performance. So these companies can't afford to get it wrong right now. Um, so that was why it was so interesting with Tesla, but if anyone has that kind of latitude to, to, to accept a lower yield, and I absolutely have to imagine, Pat, that Tesla got one heck of a deal, one heck of a, a commitment for support, for volume. And of course, as Samsung fixes their problems, Tesla is gonna get the volume it needs in the future for basically taking this risk because no one else <laughs> at this point has been willing to take that risk at any sort of scale. Yeah, what I'm what I'm hearing in the ether is that it was a combo um, ASIC DRAM D and a DRAM deal. So um, all those robots, all those cars need, need more memory too. It's not as good as some of the other ones, but it is still on a, Two, which is not something we've heard a lot about from Samsung. That's right. All right. Good discussion. I know you all know I win these things all the time, but Dan, you, you, you won that one. Do you think you won? Yeah, you did a really good job there. That was, that was fun, though.